My father was a policeman, and when he was stationed to a fishing village in southern Taiwan, my mom looked for a piano teacher because she really wants some of her daughters to take any kind of music lessons.、Um, she herself being very musical, but growing up during the Japanese occupying Taiwan, she never had the chance herself, and so she found one piano teacher in the entire village. And she found a used small harmonium, not even piano, but harmonium—the one you have to engage both pedals to create sound.、Um, she got it and told my eldest sister, "You have to take piano lesson." I was three years old. I was the fourth daughter at that point. Later on, there will be six girls of us. So.、Um, I was told to lay off the harmonium because it's not a toy, <laughs>、um, but there was always a lot of music going on in my head. I remember that vividly because whenever I hear things from the radio or my parents, they took me to watch Sound of Music, for instance, and、uh, I just never knew how to make it come alive because I hated singing. And so one day when I knew I was home alone, I thought, "This is my chance." <laughs> Only I realized that I wasn't tall enough to play and to engage the pedal. So I was standing up, pushing one foot of the pedal to make sound, and I was playing like this. And I remember playing with both hands because of all of the melodies and harmonies, which I later got to know it's called harmonies. I was just playing around and having. Great fun, and suddenly I saw my mother's head looking into the room, and she got back from the market. I didn't notice, and she said, "You are the one taking a piano lesson." And so since then, my sister was off the hook, and music has been in my life ever since. I、um, always feel that music has been the source of my strength, but also an outlet, and.、Um, It's vital to me. So, did you remember that your first official piano teacher and how the lessons look like?、Um, my first official lesson looked like play however you want, whatever score you can find here. I teach you how to read, but the rest is up to you. I feel like I didn't really learn a lot, but I. I kept practicing, and when I was nine years old, I played in the capital and other cities solo recitals. And I was so lucky that one of the German、um, physics professor, who played piano very well, who listened to me and he loved my playing, he was so kind and made a connection to the German conservatories. Among them was the Freiburg. Conservatory. That's the one Pi Xianchen、uh, has been teaching, and、um, I was nine years old at that time. So next thing I knew, the professor flew to Taiwan to hear me, and they told my parents they would like me to go to Germany to study full time. My parents said, "No way. <laughs> she has to at least finish her elementary school when she's twelve. If she wants to go, then, then she can go." And that's how. It happened, but when I arrived in Germany at the age of twelve, I really realized how much I had to make up for lost time in terms of repertoire and how to study properly. I had many teachers throughout my studies, and、um, the first teacher there was a Spanish pianist, Rosa Sabater. She was actually、um, she studied in the same studio as De La Rocha. And she taught me for about two months and gave me also a lot of Spanish repertoire to learn, which was、uh, wonderful for me because she would just dance right there Spanish for me and listen. And she was gorgeous and beautiful and intelligent, and she was、um, just my idol. And I remember after two months,、uh, she said, "I'm going away for a week. I'm going to give you several Chopin." Pieces to learn, plenty of time. One week by when I'm back, they should be in tempo. You should play them well, so I can start working with you. So in this one week, learn Opus Ten, Number One, Number Two, Number Twelve. Learn Opus Twenty Five, Number One. She even demonstrated Opus Ten, Number Two, the A minor, 
and she put a pencil on her hand and demonstrated the opening of the etude without moving her hand for the pencil to fall off. And I thought, oh, maybe I can do that in a week. <laughs> of course, that didn't happen. But the tragic thing is that um, a week later, I was told that she passed away from the plane crash. So that um, is the biggest tragedy of my life. I, I still feel it very deeply. Um, from then on, I still had many wonderful teachers. Um, but to just fast forward a little bit after that um, in my early teen years I I heard that the conservatory had an American professor coming to fill in one of the most important positions and his name was Robert Levin <laughs> so and they they placed me into his studio and I studied with him and of course many 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 years later he became my husband he was the one and definitely the first one who really made me aware of the responsibility of addressing intellectual content of every piece that you play um, I remember bringing in Beethoven fourth concerto and because I skipped um, undergrad two years so I was early doing master's degree but I got two hours piano lesson per week and I brought in this one movement I thought we had plenty of time so I played through the movement and then he started talking from there on after beyond the five opening bars I didn't get to play at all <laughs> he was always giving me as much knowledge information as he could. Um, I never knew how much there is to learn, to know, to ask questions. So it was the first really important lesson of my life. At first it was overwhelming, of course, and a little bit scary because I had, um, if you already have concerts, and for me there was important debut concerts in Europe, and yet at the same time you need to absorb as much new information as you can it's a very delicate balance and yet you just cannot shear away from it i remember him teaching me until the evening right before the concert if i was performing in the conservatory public concert he was still teaching me and it never crossed my mind not to absorb it as much as i can um, changing fingerings, that's one thing that we should never do right before performance. But anything else, um, you want to keep searching, keep improving as much as you can. Um, I am so grateful for the rest of my life to, to know what it is to go deep into every work. After I had completed all of my degrees in Germany, there was a time when Maestro Fu Tsong talked to me about possibly going to Como, Italy versus staying in Germany and focus on concertizing. But there was also the time when I was fortunate enough when Professor Russell Sherman was willing to accept me as his student at the New England Conservatory. So that's when I moved to Boston. And Mr. Sherman really has been one of my most important teachers in my life because he not only always encouraged me but he stretched and pushed me relentlessly in the best sense of word um, for me to search deeper and have a lot more contrasts to what I was feeling in the music before so um, he wanted me to widen the range and search deeper of all of the darker sides as well in the music in the emotions and the the turmoil the struggle the pain all of that he wanted as well because for him he told me that the polished, the beautiful playing shouldn't be enough. 
it mustn't be enough for me. And I feel that he really was the one teacher who, like all the great teachers, who really listen and know what is still lacking, what needs developing in a student. And he just never let go because he knew it was very hard for me. Um, I grew up used to play in a way that there is still somewhere a protected shield between my deep emotions and how I express on the music. He heard that and he heard what I had long before I knew I have it in me. So he, he pushed me and guided me. I think that was really the time when I started to confront all of these deeper characters, emotions, and that needed bravery uh, for my part and also on him. That must have been very difficult for him as a teacher not to give up and keep digging and digging and bring that out of me. Um, the older I get, the more I realize how much Mr. Sherman has given me. Um, speaking of studying with great teachers throughout my life, I couldn't have been luckier. I mean, how fortunate am I to have Alfred Brendel being my teacher and mentor at my age? Because learning is never ending for me and for him too. Even after he has retired from concertizing, he is always, always writing books and giving lectures, giving master classes, and not only to pianists. And he, he sits in juries at film festivals. I love watching films with him after our piano works is done during the days. And a great teacher like him, it's, um, they don't just inspire you during the piano lessons. They inspire you in every way and for the rest of your life. Um, he is one of the kindest, most generous person I know. He is one of the most intelligent, most imaginative, and most witted person I know. And all of this reflects in his playing and teaching. So I feel extremely fortunate that um, I have been given these chances to encounter these wonderful teachers and I also feel it's important for students as I remember the way I was I'm glad that I trusted my teachers because there were times when I didn't quite understand yet and yet if, if you feel the gut in your gut that you know your teacher, you trust your teacher, they guide you. And like I said, it's for the rest of your life. How do you combine that intellectual pursuit of knowledge and learning uh, with the emotional side of it? I don't think that I would ever arrive at a perfect balance. I try my best. Um, the interpretation should display your personality and the freedom but you must have a sense of responsibility for the integrity of music's structure, ar architecture, and its language. So for me, it's foremost studying the score meticulously. That's the very first step. I love to always um, side read a piece just like I'm getting to know someone meeting someone and that's very precious to me because that very first time you meet someone you are never ever going to get it back you can develop but that freshness that instinct you will remember and treasure it always but from studying it meticulously is hoping to get inside the composer's mind and his and her vision as much as we can that's why it's so important for us to have good additions, word text, so you get to know what is Beethoven telling me? What is Chopin telling me? Why, does he, why did he choose to write certain ways and not other ways and not certain things? Then I try to develop, have my 
feelings, my expressions, through my eyes, through my soul, we learn how to develop the technique to express through the piano. So it's very complex for me, and yet um, it's wonderfully challenging and and it's not narrowing if you want to um, hold on to the structure and the, the the composer's vision once you have developed it it's so freeing and it's truly yours so everyone's playing will be unique um, that's precious right i truly love many many composers and um and yet there are certain ones that somehow just clicked immediately ever since I was a, a small child and those are um, Mozart, Schubert, Chopin, Liszt. Liszt actually later on but he has become one of my favorite composer who is one of the most important composers to me. Not necessarily all of his works but certain works they are. And um, Ravel of course so and I love Rachmaninoff. Uh, after Freiburg I went to Cologne to study uh, for the equivalent of artist diploma in Germany and my teacher at that time was Pavel Gidilov who uh, is a prize winner of many competitions including Chopin competitions and with him there was the time when I started to want to expand my colors and the range of my sound because he could just sit down and demonstrate and the sound was just glorious and warm and rich like butter and he thank goodness actually didn't tell me exactly how to do it but he inspired me so much that I started at the time to want to search for my sound when I play various composers do you have a certain recordings that you feel like, oh, that was, that there, was good? There really isn't any recording that I would tell anyone, would you please listen because I'm happy with it? Never. But um, I have to say that, that there was a time that I couldn't play the piano for a number of years because I injured my wrist from carrying a very, very heavy table. And that was probably the biggest challenge for me to come back to playing because no matter how many treatments I went through and the doctors think I should be able to play again, it was never good enough for me to want to play concerts again. And so I told myself, I'm just going to pick one piece that I studied before and I want to further studying it because something very intriguing is there that would bring me back onto the track. So I started to practice the Liszt Sonata again. Um, and that was the hardest thing I have ever done in my life because um, when I went to Germany as a child, um, I was on my own. I had German guardians, but I was pretty much on my own and there were a lot of experiences that were very difficult for me that weighed on me for the rest of my life and I never wanted to really deal with it until I was playing the Liszt Sonata and there was just somehow the piece enabled me to open this dam and the flood just came out and it was so sad and so hard for me to practice every day I struggled emotionally and more often than not I would be in tears practicing that piece but I never let go I knew it's either now or never either I can deal with my emotions and I I'm so grateful toward this piece um, to be channeling all of these emotions for me um, so I kept going at it and after I could play this piece the way I feel that I absolutely am not holding any of my innermost emotions back. I'm ready to share this, which is extremely personal to me. If we think about what a performance is, you play in a big concert hall of thousands of people and yet 
you want to reach to each individual. Mm -hmm. You want to touch their heart and share the feelings that you have. So I started to perform this piece. I made a decision to perform this. And then in, in France, um, the there are wonderful musicians and critics who heard my playing and they were the ones who talked to the recording companies to say, record her Liszt Sonata. So that was the beginning of it. And um, I just feel like this recording, this piece has saved me. You have so much that, that you go through, right? The learning, searching, performing, and the forming your own ideas, interpretation. How do you communicate that to your students? I feel that it's important for us teachers to share everything that we have learned. And yet the most important thing is to guide them. I wish um, for all my students to have um, their own voice, their opinion, their strong feelings towards every piece we work on. And I, I always have the need of knowing the students as much as I can personally, um, so I can guide them as much as, as I can. And even when it comes to demonstration, for instance, um, there are just certain things you know it is important to have demonstration. And yet I don't demonstrate a lot or repeatedly. And if I demonstrate more than once, which is quite often, I don't demonstrate the same way. And yet I feel it's important for them to hear examples and different ways. And hopefully it will um, evoke something in them because often I feel they, they somehow know what they want to do, but they cannot quite reach to that point. So during this searching process, um, it's important for me to keep a balance of listening to them and perhaps demonstrate when it's necessary. Um, but language is important and music is language. The mm -hmm. notes are just words. It's how we put the phrasings, the gestures into phrases, just like when we speak. And um, so communication through words, I find very important in lesson. How do you teach students how to practice? It depends on each student. There will be students who, before they even start their first semester with me at college, that I would be um, having a few lessons with them just to provide technical exercises if I see what is lacking more. Um, because I feel the kind of technique that we deal with while we play a piece, that's slightly different than having a great foundation. And um, they, the students come from all over the world and not everyone would have already a solid foundation. And if I see that there is still something that needs to be adjusted or need to be improved, um, I like to do that first. And then, of course, once you start a piece, when it comes to how to practice, for me, the most important thing is the character of the piece. Everything goes from there. So when you have your vision, your ideas, then you have an imagination of how you want this to sound. When you have that idea, then you try to figure out how do I make that happen on the piano? Then we teachers can show them various kind of even tricks, how to deal with it. Is it your general posture, are you too tight, you cannot produce the kind of sound that you want, or when you are jumping, you are not watching your wrist rotation and this and that, just everything, then you start to, to break down. And how to practice in general is important um, to remind students also that you can't just start from bar one every day and then go through the end. Um, I always feel that there are sections that need to be worked on more or more urgently. So um, I have different kind of tricks or how to practice helping us to memorize, for instance, 
not to be memorizing long stretches of sections and how do you look at the melody and harmonies and just all of these things, the details that you then get into it, um, it's, it's quite a, a difficult subject. How has this pandemic for you? We all understand why the concerts had to be cancelled or postponed because health, safety, that is number one. And yet, of course, we all miss the connection to um, perform in person and connect with each other in person. That is so vital for all of us. So I do miss that part. And yet, um, I did do some online concerts because I feel that no matter how difficult the time is, no matter how much challenge we face in life, um, those are probably the times when it's even more important for us to connect and to connect through the art, through the music. So I have been grateful for conservatories like NEC, like New Orleans Conservatory, um, offering online classes continuously and I teach uh, seminars online um, that is really source of strength that I was talking about before um, even more important than ever to yeah. me so and yet I am I'm ready to go back when it's safe to do so mm -hmm. and I look forward to it